There's no going back now. Search this cave for the stairs that lead down. Ooh, it's a brand new year, it's a brand new game. Hello everyone, my name is James and this is Oceanhorn Kronos Dungeon. This is literally the very beginning of the game. I've just finished doing the podcast, the man's talking, I'm going to talk over him, and uh, I thought we'd try something new this year. I'm just going to sit down with you and play the first 10 minutes or so of this game. It came out on Apple Arcade literally about an hour ago, I've just fired it up, and I want to explore this because already this is a very, very different game to what we're used to when we see Oceanhorn. Oceanhorn being the 3D Zelda-like action-adventure game, which, oh, it's you boys again, you kind of funny blue cacti, uh, which originally was kind of an isometric top-down view, then turned into a third-person game uh, with the second installation, and now we're looking at this, which is kind of a classic 16-bit dungeon-crawling RPG in your, I suppose, Link to the Past, you know, framework, and uh, it looks nice. Look at this. This is kind of fun. So I hope everyone's had a good holiday season. This is sort of the first official proper video back because I did a review, but I can't talk to you in the reviews, can I? Keep pressing the attack button for a special one. So if I hold on to it and release... Oh, wow. I've chosen the mage character, you see. There are four characters you can choose from in this. I always go mage whenever I get the chance. I'm collecting what looks like... I don't know if that is a chicken or an avocado. I'm not sure. I'm not sure which. But... Uh, I am already enchanted by the look of this. So these are folks, the developers, the Corn Fox Bros, uh, have been in the business of switching the, not the genre of the game, but the presentation each time. Because, like I say, isometric to third person to now classic top-down 16-bit dungeon crawler, they really are coming at it from all angles. And also, this is a sort of multiplayer thing. So you can see I've got three other characters as well as my brave mage along the top of the screen. Well, yeah, I can already see it's a different colour. Let's open up. Oh, look, it's like that bit in Labyrinth with the worm. You've seen that bit in Labyrinth with the worm. Let me smash these things. So, yeah, I've got other characters here. I've got no idea how they work. Um, how do I turn it? Which, which is the turn button? I'm pressing attack. Oh, okay. Just press attack. Lovely. And how these characters come into play, I'm waiting to see. I assumed maybe you could do, like, a multiplayer thing with other people. That might not be the case. Locked gate, look for a key. Right on. This is starting to sound like Nightmare. There was a game TV show in the 80s. Oh, are these spikes? They are. Nice. Let's go. Nice. Back. Quick. Go. Yeah. Lovely. A game TV show called Nightmare in the 80s, right? And uh, it involved a kid putting a helmet on, and so they were blind, and then wandering around a room, and... Two or three other kids kind of guiding them, but there was a dungeon master, and he had a voice that boomed over the dungeon. So as you can see, I'm well into smashing up crates because uh, it has to be done. There you go. There's the rest of them. There's my 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 crew. Congratulations, now, I'm obviously getting like you know old-fashioned Zelda vibes. The fact that they mention Chronos. In the title does make me, of course, think of Chrono Trigger, another classic 16-bit JRPG from the era. To turn back time and restore the world back to the way it was before the catastrophe, is that it? <laughs> well, sure. Here to stop you. Good. Follow your fates, brave Arcadians, but beware. This mythical place is called the Chronos Dungeon. Ah, oh, they're hitting the right notes with the music, folks. Like already, the mists. Layers coming over the top of the screen there, and those synths, they've done a quite good job of replicating that Final Fantasy, you know, 6 kind of sound. Of course I can survive. A nice big key. The paradigm hourglass can be used to alter the course of history, but will you take responsibility for the outcome? No. I shirk responsibility at every turn, sir. Let me smash things. I can open one door. Is this going to be my portal to the different realms? Realms? Different realms. Like in a uh, Demon Souls. Every floor of Kronos Dungeon has a secret passage. Ooh. Oh, look at this. 
Wow, is that, is that the loading screen? That's fantastic. I really like that, because it looks like that kind of very early fake 3D they did when they couldn't really do 3D. I like my ranged attack. I assume if I had a, a warrior or something, I'd be running up to them and battering them with swords, but this is quite nice. Right, so the, the trick with doing one of these retro-inspired games where you're you know you're making a 16-bit game that's meant to look like it was made in the late 80s early 90s right is to kind of try and replicate the same effects while probably using much newer technology to do it so what we've got here is a game that really does look the part the pixel art is immediately very nice and true although if you look over there and you see the the word risk right on the left hand side of the screen above the coins that, that word risk that's not written in pixel art the overlay so these buttons uh, the orange one on the right hand side, that's all b a beautiful brand new thing. And the same at the bottom here, where you can see the move set. And if I, I think I can dash by the look of it. If I, if I do something, do I, I move, do I turn? That little button there, it's saying dash. And it's doing absolutely nothing. Oh well. Those are all overlays and those are far too high resolution. But the actual game itself, and the menu uh, options at the top there, they fit the 16-bit, they've kept it true, it's a good look. And the animation's beautiful. There's something about when you get 16-bit animation right. Those stylized throws, those fake vapor trails, like leaving little clouds of magic dust or plasma in their wake. That's, whoa! Okay, we've got a big guy this time. It's just a lovely thing. Immediately, the controls are great. Like, straight off the bat, this feels incredibly comfortable to play. Yee! Got him. Gotta try out that mega attack. I just need to hold the orange button and then I unleash a big area of effect. Whoa, whoa, run away, run away. Ah, they've got a wind-up look. Kaboom! Hey, that worked. You see the enemy flash there. I think that was signaling they were going to attack, so that's the wind-up I've got to look out for. And that thing I'm throwing, it looks like I can get two shots out of it. One when it's thrown and then one when it returns again. So that's pretty strong. By the way, if you're watching this and you're into the idea of sort of us doing some slightly more hangout videos here and there, as well as the reviews, you'll notice that reviews have come back. Which is something we've been wanting to do for a while, and they will continue. And I'm also doing a lot more in the way of lists and recommendation things, which I know people kind of... Well, I like them, I find them useful, so we hope you do too. But if you also want some videos where it's like, hey, we're just going to sit down and play through something new for 10-15 minutes and just see what it looks like, let me know. Equally, if you don't like them, <laughs> let me know. But tell me, don't downvote, just tell me. <laughs> we'll get the message. Whoa, whoa, whoa! That bat. Now it says no item equipped. Let's have a look at the, uh, that's a treasures option. The sound, the sound is extremely, extremely, um, well, Final Fantasy, isn't it? That's the Final Fantasy noise. Yikes! Okay, I'm gonna do an area effect again and release. Oh no, I didn't charge long enough. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it charged. Bam! There we go. Oh, nice! Got a double one off that. This boomerang object, I like it a lot. And the look, look at the hair bouncing in there with every footstep. That's class. Ooh! Although, as a mage, you can see that she is lacking in the health department. She's only got two hearts to begin with. Whereas the wealthy knight at the top there laughing with four hearts. We've got to be very careful. Can I switch? Oh! Oh right, okay. Well this is the, the other thing about Discovery. So, turns out, even though I selected my character was the Brave Mage, I can choose any of those four characters just by tapping on them. Ha ha ha! I thought I was going to find them at some point. People who've been playing this game for a long time and clicked on this video are going to be furious. But, the game didn't tell me to select them. Oh, oh, I got tapped by one of those dudes. So I guess it's like those uh, kind of tag team fighting games where you can bring in your other characters when some of them are flagging. Take this guy out, run, 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 run. Oh, bash, right, okay, that's the extraordinary Grandmaster. Now let's bring in the wealthy knight. Hey, there's our Oceanhorn protagonist. We know and love him. Our definitely not Link character. Let's see what 
this chap's mega power attack is. And release! Oh. Instead of performing a special attack, it didn't. Did barely anything. Attack! Ah, uh, okay, fair enough. A decent... A decent circular swing. Ow. I'm used to doing it at range. Ooh, speed! Speed! Speedy shoes! Incredibly fast shoes. Nice. Let's go. Down we go. Praying that the golden statue reduces risk this dude's and voice. makes your journey easier. I've got to say, I, I love that. It reminds me of, there was a point in games like, oh, on the SNES, or the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, if you're in the States, the SNES, uh, and the Mega Drive, particularly the SNES, they introduced this, like, some cartridges which had a chip, like a 3D chip in them, which would just about be able to knock out some very, very crude 3D. Uh, that image reminds me of those. Look at the speed of this. Rocketing around. Well, I'm getting a nice sense of progress, kind of gradually moving through these dungeons. I think it's got a roguelike element to it, so that when you restart, you get a slightly different layout. I think that's how this works. I'll have to play more, of course. Whoa! There's tons of them! Absolutely tons of them. Get the mage out. And start to lob my boomerang attacks. It's the only way to do it. Yikes. And, oh, they've certainly upped the ante with this one. Holy cow. Now, of course, as you've seen from the title, this is an Apple Arcade game, as with The Last Ocean Horn. So, if you do have Apple Arcade... You can download this right now. Everyone else will have to subscribe if they want to get in on it. Apologies for that. But I don't make the rules. Look at all the dust flying around. Those little bits of... Like light. Like dandelions floating through the atmosphere. This is, this is great. And I'm loving the music. I've got headphones in through this. And uh, this is just how I want my uh, old JRPGs to sound. So I think fair play. They seem to have been doing... It's done a promising job with this, and I'm looking forward to exploring it more. So, if you want to download it, Apple Arcade right now. Oceanhorn Chronos Dungeon. Thank you for watching. Let us know what you think, and I will see you next time.